six spheres of radius 1 are positioned so that their centers are at the vertices of a regular hexagon of side length 2. So we have a regular hexagon of side length 2. So we have this regular hexagon and we have six spheres. They are positioned at the vertices of regular hexagon of side length 2. So here's going to be the first one. Since the entire length of the hexagon is 2 and the radius of the sphere is 1, we should, the two of them should be touching, should, two of them should be tangent right at one point, like this. So here's the second one, and we're going to have the third one, the fourth one, and let's go down below, the fifth one, and the sixth one. And of course, all of them's tangent, all of them's tangent at one point. Okay, so that's the first part. So let me make sure these look more three-dimensional. So that's what we have. And the six spheres are internally tangent to a larger sphere whose center is at the center of the hexagon. So we have a larger sphere whose center is at the center of this hexagon. So let me label that. And we have the larger sphere that's going to be tangent to every single one of the leader spheres. So we're going to have this purple sphere tangent to all of the red spheres. So that's what we have. And we see that because the center of the purple sphere is equal to the center of the hexagon, they told us that the center, the center of the larger sphere is the center of the hexagon, we can find the radius of this purple sphere. The radius of the purple sphere is going to be just drawing the line like this. We know we know the side length of hexagon is 2, so we have this equilateral triangle that's telling us this length is 2, and we know this, this length is going to be the radius of the smaller, smaller sphere, so this length is going to be 1. So we know the radius of the larger sphere is going to be 1 plus 2, or 3. So that's always good to know. And what do we want to find? An eighth sphere is externally tangent to the six smaller spheres and internally tangent to the larger sphere. So let's make sure we don't misinterpret this. The center of the eighth sphere is not necessarily going to be center of the hexagon because if the center of the eighth sphere is the center of the hexagon, it may not stretch high enough. The top of the eighth sphere may not stretch high enough to touch to touch the larger spheres. So the center of this green sphere is not necessarily going to be center of the hexagon because there's a pretty good possibility that that's not going to allow this green sphere to be tangent to the purple sphere. So what's really happening is that we have the center of the green sphere lying a bit above the center of the hexagon. So we actually have, there's some vertical distance, there's some vertical distance between the center of this green sphere and the center of the hexagon, and we know this green sphere and this purple sphere is intersecting at some point right here. And now we want to find the radius of this green sphere. And this is pretty hard to visualize in three-dimensional space, so let's try to reduce this diagram to two-dimensional space by drawing a cross-section of the part that's going to actually help us find the radius. And we see for the green sphere, if we let the radius be r, you know this distance is going to be r, and you know this distance, this diagonal distance, from, from this center of the green sphere to the center of one of the red sphere is going to be r plus 1. This length is going to be r plus 1. So this length is going to be r plus 1 because you have to go through the green sphere and the radius of the red sphere. So you're going to have r, and extra 1. So let, let me draw that. So we have the center of the hexagon, so that's the purple point, and we have the center of the green sphere, and way up we have the point where the green sphere is intersecting the purple sphere, and we know this distance is r, so we know this distance is r, and we know the point way, way, way out here, the center of the red sphere, you know this distance is going to be r plus 1 because you're going through the radius of the green sphere and the radius of the red sphere. So we know it's going to be r plus 1. And what else do we know? We know this entire distance. 
we know this entire distance from the top of the purple sphere to the center of the purple sphere is going to be 3 because that's the radius of the larger sphere. So that's telling us that this length is 3 minus r. And what's this length? And that length is going to be 2 because we know this length is 2. We know this length is 2 because that's 1 because we have a hexagon with side length of 2. So we know this length is going to be 2. So that length is 2. So we know this length is 2. We have the right triangle and we can now find r. So we know our r is going to be 2 squared plus 3 minus r squared is r plus 1 squared. 4 plus 9 minus 6r plus r squared is r squared plus 2r plus 1. r squared cancel out. And we have 13 minus 6r is 2r plus 1. Rearranging, we get 8r is equal to 12, or r is 12 over 8, or 3 halves. So that's the answer to this question, 3 halves.